Need to throw an A-Rig. Oh gosh, I just put that in my stomach. All right guys, we are on a pretty quick evening mission today. We have three rods. We have a chatterbait, a little war pig, and then also a choppo. We have one topwater bite this year on a buzz bait and we're gonna try to get a couple more today i'm not sure if it's gonna happen we haven't had too much like top water action out here at this pond rat this is the pond we caught our pb out of and i keep coming out here hoping to like break it so yeah, we're gonna see how we can do today also bet like the bed season has been very weird this year like i've seen one on bed and i've been to other ponds haven't seen a single fish on bed but it's like i know they're bedding and it, we've had a lot of rain also this year so i'm sure that's kind of had something to do with it but the wind's going to this side of the pond this is like the deepest side of the pond so we're going to see if maybe we can't find one straggling somewhere another thing about this pond this is a pond where it's either you're going to catch a four ouncer or a 10 pounder there's not very much in the middle wiggle room so hopefully we can do good um which is like this is just good old like you get out of school get out of football practice and you go pond fishing this is my favorite thing to do like if i have something to do during the day and i have enough time in the evening to go fish these are my favorite times to go fish because it just reminds me of like when you first start bass fishing you have to get off work get out of practice i didn't do my homework i just go straight to the pond and bass fish i had i drove to school that morning with like rods in my car excited to go fishing later that day Let's see. Here we go. This thing is so crazy that there's not like a lot more beds. Definitely warm enough to get a top water bite, no doubt. When I fish this chop though, honestly, I'm like, until you get your first bite, you just kind of have to cast it everywhere, cast it out deep, cast it up against the bank. I mean, if you don't know where the fish are and you're trying to find them, this is a good little search bait. And then it's also fun. But then again, if you're not catching anything on it, like top water, some ponds that I found here in Alabama, especially like a lot of top water is like hit or miss in ponds. So if I don't catch anything in 30 minutes on a chopo, like you might put the chopo down and pick up a war pig and catch one first cast on a war pig. So one thing I will say is don't be afraid to, one, take multiple rods and two is put a top water down. But then again, I've also had days where I'll be stubborn and fish the top water all day and then won't catch a single fish right before daylight ends. You catch a four pounder. Seems like it normally works like that. Or you might not do too good and then all of a sudden boom you got yourself a big old big mouth bass Not only are we on a little topwater mission today, we're also on a bad fish mission because I know I'm not crazy. I know it's something that the bass in here do. I'm sure all bass bed. Maybe not every single last one of them, but there's a lot that do it. And I have not, I've seen one this year and I caught that one that I saw. So I really want to find more. I'm tired of talking about it. I feel like every video starts out with, oh, I hope I find a big fish today. <laughs> Another thing to look for to kind of like help you find fish is bait. So like back here, I see zero little minnows, no nothing. So um, if I only had, since I only have a couple hours to come out here and fish, 
this would be one of those spots where I'll just kind of like fish a little bit and I'm not going to spend too, too much time back here. Every spot's going to get one cast. I'm not going to cast that a stump twice or anything back here just because there's not really, doesn't look like there's too much going on over here. So, got to use your little context clues whenever you're, oh man, I knew that was going to happen eventually. I could feel it happening. Now, if I got back here and it was just filled with like bluegill and whatnot, I'd stay over here for 30 minutes trying to catch one, but because you know they're probably over there, but there's nothing over here. So I'm probably not even gonna fish on the way back. I'm just gonna go and grab that war pig, fish down this dam right here. Don't catch nothing at the dam. We're gonna keep it pushing. Onto the next lure, the war pig. Onto the war pig. Kind of like yo-yo and a yo a uh, war pig off the bottom seems like one of the most consistent ways to catch fish not only early in the year but throughout the year like if the bite is slow just kind of letting it sink and then almost working it like a texas rig bringing it up and then letting it fall back down a lot of times i'll get a bite like right that first movement when it's on the bottom one will be on it so i guess on the pause or that first little flutter kind of gets fish aggravated Oh, there was something that just hit that. I kind of feel like it might have been a bluegill though. Something followed it up and hit it right here. Didn't feel super big. Oh! I don't know if I was holding a rock right there or what. I've had three little bumps over here. I'm not sure if it's all fish or is it rocks because it is like a little rock bank right here. There's one. <laughs> oh, I knew something was hitting it. All right, we got our first little fish. See, this is what I was talking about when we started the video, guys, that all the fish in here are either four pounds or like this. Look at that. <laughs> little big mouth bass. Little tiny big mouth bass. But still fun. Still fun. Got our first one of the day. We're going to hopefully upgrade for that one. Hopefully we don't have a whole bunch of those in today's video. Oh man. All right, so there's our first fish. That kind of gives me confidence that we were getting little bites probably from fish smaller than that one early on. So got our first fish off the dam over here. One thing that I have like kind of found to be a pattern is a lipless lure normally catches all lures or all sizes of fish. So I'll catch anything from a fish like that to a five, six pounder out here on, or really any pond on one of those. One pattern that I have found is normally, if you're catching a whole bunch of fish and they're all that size, I'll go from like a lipless, if I'm fishing like a chrome lipless, I'll go to a chatterbait, something with a chrome blade on it. And a lot of times it might like bump that size up. You might not get as many bites, but switching up your lure, still having a moving bait, chatterbait has a little bit bigger profile. The standard size chatterbait, three eighths ounce. Normally I'll catch a little bit better fish on the chatterbait. I'm not gonna promise you a two or three pounder, but at least something with a little bit of meat on it. Oh, there we go, maybe. I think we just, yeah. It's by far my favorite color of lupus. Anything that's like chrome, always money. You can never go wrong with the chrome lupus. If you can only buy one, I'm going chrome, then I'm gonna go like gold, they may be red for springtime. All right, just to give you like a little, oh, that's a fish. Yes, yeah, that's, that's a little one, <laughs> another small one. I was about to give you a little breakdown of this pond. So basically all of the pond is pretty much, this is gonna be your deepest side of the pond. So over the summer, this is gonna be the side where I'm gonna throw like a, maybe a five to eight foot diving crankbait. 
just because you probably catch you might be able to catch a little bit bigger fish because the fish normally go a little bit deeper over the summer but um right now i'm not always going to go to the deepest part of the pond but since it's such a weird time i really can't tell you what's going on with the fish um because 100 percent they should be on bed and you should be able to cast this parallel to the bank and catch like four or five back to back to back cast but that's not going on right now um so i just go to the deepest side everywhere else is pretty shallow here in maybe a month now i'm not really sure how long it's going to take i might be able to go to any one of these banks and just parallel cast look how small that fish is this fish is so small but i can go to any one of these banks parallel cast and catch like two or three this size easy the more ponds you fish you'll really kind of start to figure out that a lot of ponds fish the same especially if they're like about in the same area so um this pond i've never caught a topwater fish at but any moving bait lipless chatter bait whatever it may whatever it might be i always have pretty good luck on so I know if I go to another pond, I start off with the choppo or I start off with the bus bait. I don't get a bite. I'm going to go to a lipless probably next. And then if I know I can build a lipless pattern and I have a lipless pattern out here at that other pond, if I'm catching on chatterbaits out here, I can probably catch them on chatterbaits out of there. The colors might be a little bit different, but normally I find pond fishing a lot of the time, the lure is the same that the fish like. So. If you find a lure that works in one pond, it might not work in the next pond you go to, but don't be afraid. Just because you have a bad day with it, don't put it in the back of your tackle box and never pull it out again. All right, dude, I'm trying to get you on the hook, I promise. All right, look at that, another little tiny one. Good thing is, sorry, I probably should have walked you down a little bit. <laughs> Good thing is we have two fish on the day. All right, so I'm gonna see if our, oh, there we go. That was right as it hit the water, if he's still on. Nope. Man. I'm gonna see if what I said comes true. I'm probably gonna fish this chatterbait on down this bank, just cause I know I can get it to sink to the bottom a little bit better. And even if there is a big fish down there, it'll probably still eat it. Um, but as we make our way around, I'm gonna switch over to the chatterbait and see if the fish size goes up a little bit. Also, as the sun sets, I might try to get a little bit more more top water cast in yeah. guys the main thing with pond fishing is you can watch all the youtube videos you want to in the world you can watch 10,000 hours of youtube videos but until you actually get out start fishing them for yourself figuring out the ponds around your area hit up google maps hit up buddies fish brain whatever it might be you have to actually go fish you know the fishing videos only help to a certain extent i was a kid i'm in my room i watch the fishing videos when i get home from fishing and like you have to figure out you have to figure out how to fish yourself you know just because you watch a million youtube videos on how to tie a knot doesn't mean you're going to know how to tie the knot also another little tip for you anytime you see like a drain pipe like that any type of pipe in a pond always cast parallel to it down if it's in the water cast down the pipe it's hanging out of the water cast all around it this one i don't think it's putting any water out this is probably drainage from like just back behind me but Pipes always equal money, no matter where you're at, no matter how bad the pipe looks, unless you can like see all around and you clearly don't see any fish. Even if you don't see any fish, if you can cast in a pipe, cast in the pipe. Pipes are always money. Oh, there we go. There's a little bit better one, it feels like. Nope. <laughs> oh, he's a little bit thicker. He's not super big, but he's, I'd say that's the biggest one of the day. Still in that same size range though. Got three, all pretty much the same size on the lipless so we know that's working and we can probably catch a big one on it but i'm gonna keep walking because i left all my rods down there so see if maybe we can get like two or three more on it and then we're gonna switch over to that chatterbait and i bet we catch a bigger one we know that they're at least biting today there we go there's another one <laughs> schooled up baby need to throw a rig oh gosh i just put that in my stomach <laughs> oh that could have been bad dang mr fish you just tried to take me out right there say so you've caught four of my buddies all right what are you doing all right i'll let you go you can do it on your own you bad you bad go ahead look at that egg right there in the water what type of egg is that that's a huge egg it's like a bald eagle see ya
if you're wondering about any of the gear I have I'm using today I don't have affiliate codes I'm so sorry but I will just tell you straight up what I have uh, I'm fishing a Berkeley Warpig I'm pretty sure this is a half ounce I want to say and I'll show it to you it's just blue blue has a blue back chrome on the sides it's like a basic bass fishing lure when you type in bass fishing lure on the internet that's what comes back then this is the abu garcia zeta reel it is a seven one to one gear ratio which means the spool turns seven times for every one full turn of the handle and then this is a fantasista x rod seven foot medium heavy best all-around rod any seven foot medium heavy rod you can do just about anything on it so if you're just trying to get started out seven foot medium heavy is always the way to go perfect rod whenever you catch two or three like that back to back in kind of the same spot keep casting in it because a lot of times you can kind of get fish fired up i know it's the craziest thing but if you're with the buddy and you catch one cast right behind or tell him to cast or if he catches one you cast right behind where he casts and a lot of times there'll be more than one fish there there might be four or five that y'all can just kind of wreck really quick you know you can catch a whole bunch of them and it's not always going to happen but there's always a good probability that especially fish of that smaller size if you catch one normally there's another one there to be caught and you see we walked all the way down that bank and then we got a lot of our bites and probably about a 20 yard stretch of it so this kind of shows there's probably even more there to be caught but if they're all that same size we'll kind of keep walking and see if maybe we can find a different school hopefully we can find a school of four or five pounder Then guys, I know this is going to contradict everything I've just told you about bass fishing ponds, but one thing that I have learned too is that bank by bank can be totally different. It's like fishing a whole new pond. I know I said sometimes like if they don't want to, some, not every pond's a topwater pond, but, or not every pond's a lipless, whatever, blah, blah, blah pond. But sometimes the bank really has a lot to do with the bottom composition of the bank and just the bank in general has a lot to do by the bank i mean the side of the pond you're fishing has a lot to do with like how the fish react behave if they're in grass they might not eat a um you might not be able to catch them on a lipless as good as you could as a chatterbait or or a chopo might work really good if there's no grass on this side of the pond but there's a whole bunch of grass over there so don't you can't ever be afraid to like just because you didn't catch something you have to try everything on every side of the pond if ponds have four or five sides you have to give every lure a fair shot on each side all right let's keep moving to we can prove our theory to be true about catching a bigger fish from that chatter bait oh oh one just came up and ate that I see it, I'm looking at the fish right here. Super small just came up and tried to eat that chatterbait. All right, I think this side is a little bit more shallow. Also, I saw something swim off over here, so maybe we can, oh, there was a little blow up right there. Oh, we got a lot of activity right here. We're going straight to where we saw that fish eat at. See, this is good because you see all the fish swimming off right here. That's basically a little bait fish that bluegills and bass eat so that means this side might be a little bit better than that side fish wise size wise oh look how it's slick calm back here i like that because it's different than the rest of the pond it's kind of like back here out of the way oh there's a whole bunch of bass i'm looking at like three of them right here None of them are big, but it's just going to be cool to see if I can drop down on top of one of them and catch, catch one. See, this would be the spot that you would really want to spend a lot of time, especially right here at the end of the day when fish are starting to feed a little bit. I 
I'm looking like four right here. Look, there's one that just hit it. Got him. Got him. <laughs> oh, that's cool. That is pretty cool. Quick and easy. All right, we're going for a bigger one than that. But look, he was just right. He had to be caught. Oh, there's another one right here. <laughs> They're all just right here. They're not on bed, I don't think. Oh, there's another one trying it. Super small. <laughs> oh, there's a bigger one. Oh, hey, he's going to it. Got him. Oh, missed him. Oh, he's swimming after it. Don't move. Oh, there's one. <laughs> wow, biggin'. Look, this fish has like a big head, big mouth. So I would call him big mouth bass. I mean, just like look at the mouth and face versus the rest of the fish. This one's a little thick. So he's over here on the side of the pond where there's actually like bait and whatnot for him to eat. He's not over there starving trying to pick little mites off of grass. He's ate a bluegill in his life. He's not super long, but he's had a little something, something to eat. Put us at like six, seven. Chasing a bag, I'm racing the clock. Look at him flock, watching him flock. Used to see this on my sleep. When I ain't had shit, but my thoughts in the car. I really was lost. Now I'm public with the soundscapes.